<laughs> Welcome back. Uh, a big part of our community here uh, is here with us, Nick Glant. Um, who is with Steve Curran. And, and guys, well, welcome back. How are you? Good to be here. Good. Thanks for having us. Yeah, you know, I thought it was really perfect that you guys are here today because one of the things we want to hit on is you know, education and helping people understand what's going on, helping people understand how to buy houses, how to sell houses. And that really does build a sense of community around what it is that you guys are doing. Talk a little bit about, uh, you know, what you guys, what you at NWG are doing as far as the education side. And, and helping people understand what's go on, going on. Well, I, I, when you say community, that's a it's a great word for that because it's, it, they're so often we're getting a broad stroke on what the real estate market's doing, and we have to boil it down to communities because it's so nuanced within every market. And oftentimes, as as brokers, we're not as educated on each community as we should be, and the community itself is more educated on that area. So what we're trying to do is really get focused into each each area and make sure we're giving people the correct depiction of what's going on in that area, not just overall. You know, and that's, that's a key point. Anybody would tell that the real estate market is not doing well in Seattle. Well, no, that's a great point that, you know, when you look at so many of these different national reports, Case Shiller out this morning, they're looking at, you know, the 30,000 foot view, you know, when they're looking at a tri-county area. And if you go in certain areas of Seattle, the east side, and if a buyer applies that, you know, what they've picked up in terms of that national knowledge to current situations in terms of how they formulate an offer, they're going to get a pretty rude uh, rude reception from the seller. So I think it, it is real important, like Nick mentioned, just to really look at it in terms of what specific communities and submarkets are doing, just because even you look at it from neighborhood to neighborhood, to county to county, it's different all across the board. Yeah, and there's so much information coming at people every day. And so the, you know, I had a client this morning email me a CNN Money article about how the we haven't bottomed out nationwide yet. And so they were concerned about, they were apprehensive about their purchase in Bellevue. And Quite frankly, what they're looking at in Bellevue has gone up literally in the last two months about 5% based on inventory levels and the, and the demand that's picked up. So you have to make sure people know what's going on specific to their area. And it's uh, so, yes, nationwide, maybe as a whole, we haven't bottomed, but certain areas certainly have and are coming back with, with some fury right now, actually. so Why is that? Pure supply and demand. There's just inventory from the, the peak levels of summer of 2008. Inventory is down 60%. 70% in some markets in northeast Seattle. So, I mean, you look at it that, you know, you'd take every 100 homes that was on the market back in 2008. Now there's only 30 that are available and pendings have doubled, you know, since we were, you know, towards the, the bottom, at least, of the pendings back in, you know, the low point of the crisis in 2009. So we're starting to see supply and demand absorption rates that we haven't seen since the, the height of the market, frankly. It doesn't mean prices aren't reflecting that, but statistically, and we're starting to see a market that's turned very rapidly in the past six months. Yeah, and it's and the other thing is we are seeing a, an uptick in confidence from the market. I mean, it's we're not there yet. We're not out of the woods. But what we're seeing from buyers is I've waited long enough, and now I feel like we're not we're not entering into a fear market like we were four or five years ago. Where gosh, I don't know what's going to happen to me, my job. We're seeing more of that. Okay, I'm going to make a decision because it's, I'm not paralyzed by what might happen outside of my control. I'm just going to make the decision because I feel a little bit more comfortable mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the environment we're in. So, And you're starting to see some buyers that are earning the market that are concerned about waiting too long now rather than making the decision you know, to, to go ahead and step in. Where we had a four-year period where prices were still falling and at times falling substantially. And you know now they're saying, well, if I wait... Even if prices are just going sideways, as inventory is dwindling, they're starting to worry that, well, I might not have as much to choose from. There's a little bit of a fury out there. In reality. I mean, that's what I, we're, we've heard, seen and heard is yeah. there's people out there who are literally just trying to get into a house. It's, it's time war back to 2006. It's a little, well, it's a little like the beginning of 2007 where we, as we entered into the down market, we sort of were in the same situation where inventory was down and there was kind of this last minute spurt of these multiple offer situations and people reaching for property. And as we come back out of this thing, we're sort of exhibiting some of the same things. This is a little bit of uncharted territory just in the, the amount of inventory because build, you know, builds have halted so much. Um, but we're not, from our angle, ready to say this is a hot market. We're ready to say it's, it's kind of a, an anomaly to some degree. 
Um, and we're really uh, cautious with our buyers about reaching too far right now because supply can't stay this low for that long. Um, confidence will probably continue to just gradually pick up as the job market improves. But, you know, at some point, sellers will get wise to this and there'll be more inventory to choose from. Builders will find a way to meet the demands and in two to three years will normalize. But right now we're in a really weird bubble. So we're not going out to our buyer saying you got to lock up things immediately. We're just still be cautious, be careful. And so we're, we're not there with the frenzy. It kind of reminds me that, you know, of calculus. Remember there was like the rate of acceleration, like how fast is the acceleration accelerating? Yeah. And right now it kind of seems like, okay, it's this big blip, but then that, that, that will gradually kind of maybe level off to something more normal. With our, our absorption rates over the past few months have gone parabolic to the point where it's, you know, we're, we're getting to the spot where something has to give. It can't keep increasing at this, you know, this brisk pace. And, and I think that we've just experienced a you know, with the market that we've come out of also, where even though rents have definitely, you know, increased a lot over the past three years, renting is no longer, you know, rent isn't a four-letter word. And I think that if buyers don't see enough quality inventory, they are going to step back onto the sidelines to a degree. And one of the big things also that just as there's been pent-up buyer demand over the past several years, there's also a lot of pent-up selling demand that will step back into the marketplace as we get an uptick in prices, as they start to see homes in their neighborhood selling quickly, that there's been a lot of sellers that have been waiting for some improvement, and that's going to step back in as well as the market improves. Well, uh, guys, we have to go to break, but uh, stick with us. You're going to join us when we come back. Again, we're here with Nick Lant and Steve Kern from NWG Real Estate. And uh, you know, when we come back, you guys have a whole new education platform that you've launched, which I'm excited to uh, share with everybody. My name is Ben Brashen. You're listening to Brashenomics. We'll be right back. 